Hello there, welcome to the third section of your NEA write-up and this section is all about how you present the data you have collected during your investigation. So you've been out to collect all of your data, you've now got all of that data and now you need to find a way to represent that data in your write-up. So the key thing to remember here is any data presentation methods you use will be incorporated into your data analysis. So as you write your data analysis, you're gonna put these graphs into your data analysis so you can analyze them as you go through your analysis. So the checklist for the data presentation is slightly different in that there is no specific data presentation method you must use. There is just guidelines on what you should do. So those guidelines are as follows. You must have appropriateness of data presentation methods. In other words, those methods you choose, whether that be a bar graph, a pie chart, a kite diagram, a radiograph, and so on, must be appropriate to the data you have collected and must represent it well. Secondly, you must have a diversity of presentation. So that must mean a, pick, a difference in both ICT-based presentation methods and hand-drawn. So you must have a mixture of those two. And finally, it must be wide ranging or have a wide scope. And what that means is it should not just be all pie charts and bar graphs. It should be a mixture of cartography, where we use maps and graphs together, proportional symbols, pictograms, pie charts, bar charts, word clouds, etc. So just briefly, for some advice on appropriateness of presentation methods, all presentation of data, whether it's simplistic like a bar chart or more complex like proportional circles must be appropriate to the data you are representing. So at the bottom of this screen and on the PowerPoint you will have access to are four links. These four links take you to websites that show you how to use data presentation methods and what data is appropriate for what type of presentation method as well. So please go and have a little read of those and make sure you are using data presentation methods which are appropriate to the data you have collected. So I'm gonna take you through now some examples of presentation methods from past students' NEAs. You can use these as models and you can see how they have represented their own data. So first of all, we've got pie charts, line graphs, and bar graphs. So we can see graph one on the top left here is a pie chart. Now this pie chart represents pedestrians on Boots Corner, and the question in the questionnaire asks them whether they know about pedestrianization or do not know about pedestrianization. And that's a really simplistic piece of data that can be put into a pie chart quite easily because it's a yes or a no answer. The second uh, representation on the bottom left here is a noise level in decibels graph. Now this is a line graph and what this student has done is they have colour coded the graph in blue and orange, blue being west, orange being going east and then the line graph shows you the changes in those decibel readings with distance as well. So that's appropriate because it's showing you the two separate sets of data going from one place to another with distance and how it changes over that distance. Remember, line graphs are appropriate for distance and appropriate for time as well. And finally, we've got on the right hand side of your screen, graph two and graph three. And graph two and graph three are showing you pedestrian volumes and traffic flows. Now, bar graphs are useful for total tallies, so they are really easy to use to tally up and represent the number of people or the number of specific aspects in a place. So you can see the pedestrian volume one shows you times of day and the pedestrian volume, and they have also separated it into weekday and Saturday in blue and red, and that's showing you the difference between the weekdays and the Saturdays. And you can see very clearly there on that graph that the Saturday has more pedestrians 
across the time of the day there. Similarly for traffic flows at Boots Corner there on the two days, on the weekday and the Saturday, you can see that there is again those differences between traffic volumes at those different times of the day. So they are some appropriate ways to use pie charts and line graphs and bar graphs as well. Moving on to cartographs and cartograms. Now, these are graphs that are represented on a map or they are data represented on a map. So we can see the first one on the left-hand side here is sediment transportation. And this student has measured how sediment moves with the tides and waves along the coast at Weymouth. So you can see that the different arrows represent the different reliability and also the different volume of sediment moving along this coastline. This is quite a complex presentation method, but it is very well executed there, as you can see, and it's showing you the flow of those different types of sediment as well. On the right-hand side here, we can see map two, and this shows you traffic flows around a one-way system, and it's showing you decrease or increase since 2000. Um, Again, you can see that the arrows represent the amount of traffic, and they have also used on this data presentation method the numbers of traffic counts available in these places. So they are how you would use cartograms or cartographs appropriately. And just to show you as well on this, it can be done very easily in written form, you can see here that this is a proportional symbol cartograph to show pebble size. And the bar charts also show pebble shape from well-rounded to essentially what is rigid. Now you can see this is along Chesil Beach on the south coast, and you can see the proportional circles represent the size of the pebble shape. And you can see then the bar graphs represent what those pebbles actually look like. So they are some of the types of cartographs or cartograms you could use in your NEA investigation. Annotate photos. Now a lot of students tend to use these because they're a good visual representation of what they've seen on the day. You can see on the left hand side here we've got some examples of some annotated photos. You can do this for both a physical or a human investigation, but the key thing with an annotated photo is that it only becomes useful when you actually properly annotate it, explaining what you are picking out, what you see, and how that relates to your investigation. So for example, the river you can see there in the middle of the screen, site one of the upper course. This investigation was about the changes in erosion downstream. So you can see that the student here has clearly labeled that it's a V-shaped valley because it's steep, there's vertical erosion. You can see that the large boulders there haven't had enough time to be eroded and so on. You can also see on the bottom left here, there is another annotated photograph and this is of an old building. And this was looking at gentrification and regeneration in an area. And you can see that the student points out that there's a roof garden providing appeal. The physical appearance is changing. There's new windows. And you can see that they've also pointed out that it relates to population too, as there's a Sainsbury's just beside it that's opened to cater for a more affluent population. And finally, on the right hand side here, this is a bit of a different way of doing things. This is where you combine all of your presentation methods for each site together. So, for example, site one there in Bishop Stortford of this student's investigation combined annotated photos and a radiograph and a pie chart onto one page. So this student took all of their 10 sites, put them all on one page. So there are 10 pages in total and they all represent each of the sites and all of the data on each page. So that is one way you could do it as well. And just some final tips for you before you crack on with your data presentation. Remember that you are going to incorporate your data presentation into your analysis. So make sure the data presentation you choose is worthwhile in doing and also that something that you can actually analyze. Some data is simplistic. Some questionnaires have a yes or no answer. So keep the data presentation simple. Some data is complex. For example, measuring pebble size along a beach. So represent it as well as you can. 
use the RGS NEA guide. That guide has in it about 30 pages of different types of presentation methods, and it shows you how to do them as well. So please do refer to that. Make sure you give each presentation method a name. So graph 1.1, graph 1.2, table 1, table 2, etc. This is so it's easy to follow when you put it into your analysis. And finally, remember, if you can put your data presentation method on a map, please do that. That makes the presentation method more accurate, more reliable and more complex automatically. So hopefully that gives you some ideas on how you are going to represent your own data. Please do refer back to this if you need to and refer to that RGS NEA guide and good luck with your data presentation.